Alright, it's a job well done for another clan battle having successfully been completed for the most part. There's a couple of little details here and there that I do need to go into and I gotta kinda hurry this along for the most part here because the AOC clan has two designated clan battles that are getting ready to happen today with the one with Nemesis and now the one with the CEG people that's now getting ready to start in a few minutes and so I kinda have to make this very quick and to the point for everything that's going to happen here so let's get this going starting into round in discord starting in round one which as usual is the capture the flag session this one here had to be restarted a couple different times due to host connection issues because not everybody can connect to everybody's host and so everybody has to have a problem with said host who's designated for the match so here we had to do a host change like two or three different times. It's originally AOC's host, but the host had to change to it being on Nemesis's host since Nemesis had a designated host at that time that could be the host, which was Belmont Brawler at that point. We went on ahead and had him go and host in our stead rather than it being Warrior or Flux or myself. Myself, usually, usually my net would be the one that would be hosting for AOC's. However, at this time that could not happen since this was a very unusual day where the weather outside of my end was rather crummy and it's one of those rare instances where even my net is not up to par and not everybody can connect on my host and so that one time when I go to pause my game in order to see whatever else somebody else needs or when I pause my game it causes a mass freeze or mass lag that happens on screen which I did not comprehend until it happened and then suddenly everybody else was lagging out of the match suddenly when I had to go answer a message because there's some people that wouldn't get the idea that I kinda can't answer right now because I'm in the middle of doing something else that has my attention right now. So with the two hosts that could not work, we went on ahead and had the host work for Nemesis. Here it could work as a 5v5 but then here's a complication that did further the complication because Blaze Enzon could not connect to Nemesis's host. Blaze could not connect to Belmont's host at all. And so while Nemesis knows what to do here in order to try and correspond to a 4 versus 4 which is now what this will have to be dwindled down to as a 4 versus 4 with a pending 5 versus 5 should Blaze be able to connect at any one point. I went on ahead and sat myself out because the rest of the guys that were on my team did all want to respectfully sign into the match. Flux could not connect on to the host at any one point of time, which I was hoping that he could because his net his net type is rather unusual, but it can connect to some people's hosts if he connects in not during the match but before the match. Then he can stay in. It's just getting him back in that's the hard part. Well, whom is that was able and presentably available on our team in order to play? I went on ahead and let them continue to play. That way they can develop their own strategies and plans in their own right without me guiding them too much or trying to figure out in their own right how this can this or that can effectively work in their favor for a buddy system. Since there's going to be teams of two, you also have to do teams of two on your own right and make sure that there's somebody back at the base in order to defend the flag so people on the enemy's team don't just go walking into the base and take the flag, which is what almost happened on a number of different times. Me, on the other hand, I like I said, what I did was just set myself out and then I just continue just sit and record the rest of that session and just watch what it is they're doing right and doing wrong. I try to give them a little bit of tips here and there. That way it gives them a little bit of idea so I am still there vo vocally or I'm here in spirit still. I can't physically do anything with the enemy until a fifth player on their team comes in or if any of you guys wants to switch in. But they wanted to continue to try to make it work and so I was all for it. And so I continued to try to push them in order to use their heads and to work together, be coordinated, and be communicated, be verbally open and be cooperative with your teammates. Use communications in order to ping where people are or where they will be, where you as the medic need to be, where you as the flag runner need to be, how you need to run, make sure the medic's around you all that good stuff all well and fine and for the most part AOC was able to effectively hold their own in order to try and keep the flag pinned down 
long enough for when they wouldn't be able to make another capture. Unfortunately, yes, they did make another capture, but they got the general idea down about being more in a team-based mindset when doing this stuff. And so that's how Capture the Flag ended in um, Nemesis's favor. Next, moving into round two, which was Conquest, also on Nemesis's host. I believe Belmont also had hosted this one, as this had continued as a five versus five. Again, this was supposed to be on AOC's host originally, but nobody could connect to the AOC people that were connecting. Nobody could connect on AOC's host, and so we had to redo all the hosts all over again in order to try and have people connect. <sighs> Which again was starting to be very bothersome, but again, it's just how it was naturally supposed to be or how it was going to be at this time. So, what we did then was have Belmont go on ahead and host again since Belmont's net type was interestingly crisp for this one again. So, we went ahead and had that one. So, in a sense, Belmont hosted all of the matches that would happen for today. When I had hosted that, that one was on Bowels, I believe. That was our pick. And we went ahead with the five versus five is what this originally was. And I went on ahead with the sweeping plan style outline that I gave them to work with. Grimwave and Warrior called out the outlines on this one. And so I was not the one leading this one, but rather they were. That way they could get the idea about how to effectively give call outs when needed and to put people in specific positions offensively and defensively speaking and preparing for ro possible rotation. Here, Grimwave and Warrior's plan more or less fell into very good alignment, as everybody here was very coordinated, and they played to team killing effectively, where one comes in and softens up, the other one comes in in order to try and swoop in, get the kill, bada bing, bada boom, keep this thing moving in order to keep the people off the nodes as effectively as possible, and to effectively sacrifice one node, that way we can sustain two nodes. Don't let them get the triple cap, or if they do get a triple cap, don't let them hold it for long. Otherwise, that point gap goes way out of our favor, and we're not going to be able to catch up in time. Because the problem with a catch-up game is that time works against you in trying to catch up. If you're already ahead, time works with you. Not against you, with you. When it's the other way around, it's against you. Here, the plan worked to a very good extent, but unfortunately, AOC did fall short a second time. But I give credit where credit is due, as the strategy was able to effectively turn me into a battering ram. It was able to turn me and Warrior into a pretty good deal of battering rams in order to plow through a lot of their defenses, as what they were doing basically with Omega Saccharin. Because Omega was plowing through a lot of our forces while I was plowing through most of theirs. And it went back and forth, but they picked up the win as they were able to hold down the nodes for longer periods of time to counteract the offensive force that AOC was now respectfully bringing. As momentum shifted in our favor, but time shifted out of our favor. And then that was basically the finishing point of the clan battle, which also brings me now to the point that I need to try and address really just respectfully. And then this will bring my synopsis of the Alliance versus Nemesis Part 3 to a conclusion. And I know my other team here is trying to hurry this along here, but we'll get to CG when we get there. I have this set for them to do the outline, like I said, and I will be ready to turn my attention vocally back to them in a second. Addressing point one which is the factor that there was no team deathmatch that did happen. So, <clears throat> allow me to explain. All right, due to time and in real life factors that were working against Nemesis at said time and continuing to that stage of the clan battle, any, the clan battle did not see to a third successive round at all. As no one at all made a call on what to do here, this made for a much harder ruling on my end because I know not how to make any official call or ruling on this situation in any way, shape, or form. Now, this may not sit well with either clan because this is only my perspective of that session and only my perspective, but I do have two calls that I can officially make on this. I do have two official calls that I can make. This is also going to be posted on the gamefacts.com if it hasn't already been done. <sighs> And then this can be looked at for revision later on. If anybody has any questions, comments, or concerns, you can you can leave it in the comment section of the video or the series of videos, or you can just reach me personally on GameFAQs or YouTube, blah, 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 PSN, and all that stuff. Okay, so 
The CB is agreed to with the standard best two or three rounds match point unless it's specified differently. Two sessions are complete already, which establish the whole decisive point match winner. So the third round would be merely just to fulfill all of the above, but wouldn't really need to be an issue unless round two, which was the conquest session on Belmont's host, ended in a win for AOC or a draw between both clans, which neither scenario had happened. So, point one. As nobody said anything about leaving Team Deathmatch alone, but just up and left suddenly, possibly and easily due to real life factors, and that's understandable. I can rule out that it could be a pending forfeit of Team Deathmatch, and this would place the score at 2 to 1, but will not affect the overall decision, but will merely be a timely result that would be relevant of circumstance at that time. I mean, I'm not trying to be a dick or be that guy, but at the same time, I am trying to be fair, and I'm trying to seek to play this by the book some, and to effectively look at this ruling by the book as there have been past possible issues or something like this once before that have probably happened in this community and in the clan scene long before this right now. Also, point two <clears throat> is that I can rule this out as a mute point of interest. A mute point of interest. So here I can make the ruling stand that the game was sought with the intention to be finished but honestly could not be finished. And so the session will be counted as an incomplete or an NA not, not available, and the score stands at 2-0. to zero. Boom. Overall, the choice is up to you between either or clan. Either way, in this gray area, it is still Nemesis's win of the clan battle all in all, so it matters not how in-depth one would really seek to look upon this piece of the ruling or that part of the clan battle regarding a fully incomplete session to a clan battle that's already having reached match point. All in all, good game. And Nemesis, until next time we do meet on the battlefield in order to do our thing yet again. Peace, till all is one.